program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. Today is a cry for revival. We are living in the last, last days. I have a prescription for revival. I want every true believer to use this because if we do not repent and turn to God, Daniel even said in Daniel 9, this is why this evil has come upon us, because we have not prayed unto thee that we would turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. I am going to give you a prescription for revival. I want you to listen to the first part of this, then I'm going to give you how you can know for sure you are a child of God. Only people that are born again can pray. So we are asking every true believer to use this and we will see a difference in our nation. The first thing, this is from, most of you know, Dr. Torrey, T-O-R-R-E-Y. His son was a missionary in Korea. He wrote this and he said, I want you to listen what he says. He says, first, let a few Christians get thoroughly right with God, if this is not done, the rest will come to nothing. This is a cry from heaven. This is a heavenly divine calling. He says, let them bind themselves together to pray for revival until God opens the windows of heaven and comes down. Now he has promised if we obey him, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings we don't know how to receive. Let them put themselves at the disposal of God for his use as he sees fit and winning others to Christ. Now all of you know that this has been my prayer. When I give out God's word, I have asked him for 100 fold. This is a supreme need today. And we must do what this says. And I want you to listen to what he says. I have given this prescription around the world. And in no instance has it failed. It can not fail. This is what we need today. We must get back to the Word of God. We must get back under the blood. We must get back to teaching how to be born again because we have learned in these lessons that I have been teaching God only gave religion to one nation that was Israel and that ended at the cross today unless you are born again and believe what God's Word says and this is for every religion. 
Religion can never save you. Denominations can never save you. It's all about Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John 14, 6. And we are going to learn the truth concerning the Word of God and what He has for us because he, this light of the Word of God, this light reveals all darkness. This truth brings forth all lies. The truth will teach us all lies. This is what we're going to learn. And we must believe in the virgin birth. We must believe in the resurrection. We must believe that the blood cleanses from all sin. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that we can come today to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Thy grace is sufficient for every need. And we thank Thee that we can come into the holiest by the blood with a true heart and full assurance of faith that whatever Thy word is, says, if we appropriate it by faith, not one word can fail. So we're praying for 100 fold today, and we pray that that will go before us to open the hearts up of people that are ha do not have assurance of salvation or has never ever been born again, and those that have to get right with thee and have fellowship with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And we're thanking Thee for what Thou art going to do, and this cannot fail. And we are believing that these few Christians are going to bind ourselves together in perfect unity because we are one body and we must have unity and there can be no division or we will fail. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So today, we, as we teach these lessons, here's what we must do as a child of God. And I don't know how long ago he had this and taught this. I do not know the years, how many years it's been. But we know today this is the greatest need, is to get back to the Word, word of God that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. This word is the most powerful weapon under heaven. And the word cannot be understood apart from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit and the blood and the word he is unconquerable. The Holy Spirit cannot be conquered. So we already have victory if we're truly born again. So here we see what he says. Let a few Christians get thoroughly right with God. But let's face it, it this is what we are so reluctant to do. Getting right with God means not only being sure of our salvation as forgiven sinners, this is the most important one, but this is being sure of our fellowship with God as friends and saints. Getting right with God means not only being sure of our salvation as forgiven sinners, but being sure of our fellowship with God and with as our friends and saints of God. Now this means, I want you to listen, this is so important, never to retain a grudge. Never to retain a grudge against anyone. 
forgiving 70 times 7. So as a child of God, we cannot retain a grudge. It means always speaking the truth, experiencing even righteous indignation. This is so important without giving way to anger or allowing Satan any advantage over us. This is so important that every time we sin, Satan gets advantage over us and we lose the blessings of being in right fellowship with God. This means forgiving 70 times 7. Now I want you to remember these truths. It means speaking the truth, experiencing even righteous indignation without giving way to anger or allowing Satan any advantage over us when we are angry. Now, love never tolerates sin, but we cannot be angry. That is letting Satan get the victory. So this is the most important thing, and this is what we're going to start out with. Are we truly born again? This is, first of all, John 3, 16. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So you can put your name in the whosoever. And here he says Christ came to give this gift to the world, the gift of eternal life. God has already given Christ to the world, but each individual must appropriate him by a personal act to get the personal advantage of the gift, and so must each individual. Now, this is so important. Every individual is responsible to God for their own sin. With individual personally appropriating God's gift of the Holy Spirit to get personal advantage of the gift. So how does that happen? The first thing we understand is there is a trinity. Genesis 2, 7, and the Lord God formed man out of the ground, that's his body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, his spirit, and man became a living soul, the soul of man. So we know that the body of man touches the material world through the five senses, sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. Everyone knows those. They're always taught. But this has never been taught. The soul uses the five senses of the body as its agent for its self-expression and communion with the outside world. The gates of the soul are imagination, conscience, memory, reasons, and affections. So we Adam was created out of the dust. He had a perfect body, soul, and spirit. A perfect body, soul, and spirit. The spirit receives the impressions of outward and material things through the soul and the body. You've got to remember this. And many people have never heard these truths. The sense faculties of the spirit are spiritual faculties of faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. You have none of these until you are born again by the spirit of God. Now listen what's wrong with the world today. In man's unfollowed state, the spirit of man was illuminated from heaven. God gave him a body, soul, and spirit. But when Adam sinned, it closed the window of the spirit and pulled down the curtain of the chamber 
of the Spirit. And this chamber became a death chamber. You are dead in trespasses and sin. Every person that's born. Every person is the same in God's sight. There is no respecter of persons. Every person is born with a death chamber. Because and remains so in every unregenerate heart until the life and light giving power of the Holy Spirit floods that chamber with the life and light giving power of the new life in Christ Jesus. So you see, people are dead and don't even know it. They have a death chamber until the Spirit of God. We believe that Christ died for our sins. The crucifixion atones our sins. The resurrection eradicates our sins. So I must be born again by the Spirit of God. That is in John 3, when Nicodemus came to Christ. And he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I say unto you, ye must be born again. We see then, while the natural man cannot understand spiritual things. Now we're going to find that out in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, but not right now. As I give this to you, I'm giving it to you a little at a time so you will not be confused and you can understand what God has wanted people to teach for over 2,000 years. He cannot understand them until his spiritual nature has been made alive by the Spirit of God. But the spirit of the natural man is not only darkened, his will stands as a guard at the door and prevents the entrance of the Holy Spirit. And it is not until his will surrenders through the power of the Word of God. He cannot be saved without hearing the Word of God. The, that the Holy Spirit can enter and take up his abode in the spirit of man and then the battlefield of good and evil is in the soul. So you have not a, any wisdom from the Word of God apart from the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. The Word of God must be given out in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us all things. And then, here's what happened. It is not enough that the Holy Spirit should take up his residence in the spirit of a man. He must have access to the body and soul. Perfect unity. And everybody that's born into this, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we now are one in Christ. They are equal. Every person that's born again is equal. We are one. The Spirit of God unites and never divides. It is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. It is the blood that unites us into one body. There can be no division in this body of believers. Now the Spirit has to use the body and the soul. Not until then can a man become dedicated for concentration is conditioned on a spirit, feel, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 And the God of all peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray that your body, soul, and spirit will be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here's what's wrong with the whole world. This is why we can't have revival until this has been fulfilled in everybody's heart. Your heart, when you give your heart to the Lord, that's your intellect, your emotions, and your will. 
and your will stands at the door and prevents the Spirit of God from coming in. A healthy soul and spirit need a healthy body. And if the body is given over to carnality and the lust of the flesh, the soul and spirit suffer and the whole man becomes spiritually sick. Lust of the flesh is the greatest sin today. If you are born again, you cannot receive any blessings from God if this is you. A healthy soul and spirit need a healthy body. And if the body is given over to carnality and lust of the flesh, the soul and spirit suffer and the whole man becomes spiritually sick. Now, this is God's Bible verse to you today, if you're born again. If you're not born again, then you must receive the gift of eternal life. Here he says in his word, Ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This is what's wrong with the world. So we cannot have this prescription for revival if this is any of us. And an unsaved person, when Adam sinned against God, now listen to this, he lost the spiritual faculties and became dead spiritually to God and his spirit. This brought death upon the body and the soul. You see, after you're born again, you can never die because God's Spirit can't die. You're born of the Spirit of God, and you, you will never die. And you have to understand this because I give it to you all the time. But this is the most important thing for you to understand this. I, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, now you say this with me, shall never die. Believest thou this? Because your spirit cannot die, because that is from heaven. We have a heavenly birth. It is a heavenly birth. It is divine conception. Christ had to have this birth by the Holy Spirit so he could be the only person under heaven that had a body, soul, and spirit that were perfect. So this Holy Spirit, when he comes in to your soul, because it is the blood that makes an atonement for your soul, and he comes in to this death chamber, this spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, I am, this is a heavenly life now. That's why there is no denominations, no, no religion. It's all about Christ because denominations and religions are of man, of the world. Now, we are getting close to when we we'll see the one world religion without Christ in the book of Revelation, the one world government. This is those that have rejected these truths. And it is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. So we are going to learn next week how we can have this wonderful, wonderful prescription for revival. We will read this over and over. I will repeat these things until we see this happen to all of us. Also, it means never taking properties of others. Or a, this is the most important thing for us to know how bad gossip is. It means never taking property of others, including theft 
of their good name by repetition of gossip. God hates gossip. And when we gossip against another person that has sinned, instead of praying for them, then we are ruining their good name as a child of God. Because without being a child of God, none of these can happen to you. And then it means that we do not grieve God's indwelling spirit by bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, or malice. It means kindness toward others, kindness toward others with tenderness of heart, forgiving and forgiving and forgiving again, as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us. Ephesians 4, 26 through 32. Now, getting right with God demands ruthless examination of ourself and honest confession of sin, both to God and to any person sinned against. Now, I have been reading this almost every day, forever. So I could be able to give this to you because as I give out God's word, I must live it first. And this is what he wants us to do. And this is, then and only then will we know that whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. That's 1 John 3, 21 and 22. Now you can begin today by reading Romans chapter 12 and Romans chapter 13. I will give you an outline of those chapters next week.